you squeeze through here, this, and here, travel. Which is pretty cool. So you've still got literally all the old pews and that's still a fully preserved organ. This chapel here was purchased for 75K by Hannah Mills, which is a still because if you look across the road, this little bit of land here is up for sale for 20k. So let's go have a look inside. So this is going to be the entrance mm -hmm. to the flats. There's going to be kind of like an entrance here with post boxes. Uh -huh. And then there's going to be like a door here where you're going to have a key fob entry. So if people need to drop off parcels, uh -huh. whatever, yeah, yeah. the postman can come in, drop them all off here, but he doesn't have to gain entry to the building. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then at least it's still protected. So entrance is going to be here and then you're going to have like another entrance here. And then that's going to go into a staircase kind of just about here. Mm -hmm. And that's going to lead you to all the different flats. Okay. So it's going to be four floors. Um, there's going to be two one beds on the top floor in the attic, which I'll show you when you go in there. Um, it's really high. Um, and then you're going to have one, two, three flats on the other three floors. Yeah, three flats on the other three floors. But this is going to be the main entrance. So keeping the original structure of the building, we're not adding anything on. I think it'd take away from the building if we built any extensions or anything on it. it it's beautiful enough as it is. The other really key thing about this is it's not listed, mm -hmm. which is huge uh, because it basically means that planning wise, not that we can do anything that we want, but it gives us a lot more scope. Yeah. Um, if it was listed, we it'd be a lot more problematic. Figures on this, we bought this at auction, 75 grand. It was a sealed auction, so it wasn't like normal auction conditions where you know you have people bidding. You basically had to submit an offer by a certain date. It was sealed. We put in an offer for 75, and, and it was accepted. Um, I think all in all, um, it's about 468 square feet as it the building exists at the moment. But obviously, we're going to be creating four floors. So I'll show you around the front. And apparently, that bit of land there is 20 grand, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is 20 grand, which puts things into perspective, right? <laughs> But it also shows you as well, there's, it's more than possible to still find deals like this. Yeah. You're just looking in the right places. So this here is like basically side garden. We're going to keep this as a communal space, leave some of the flowers, make it look nice. But ultimately, it's probably going to have patio there just to make it really low maintenance, easy to keep. We are going to change some of the window heights and things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all UPVC windows at the moment, they're all timber framed. But because it's not listed, we don't have to keep them. Yeah. But in terms of like the whole structure of the roofs and everything like that, Exactly the same. So these are the original entrance halls. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually not going to use them. Uh, those doors there and that door there is just going to be a feature point. It would kill loads of space. The, 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 the way to maximise the most amount of flats was actually to have a central staircase mm -hmm. and to close these off because in these spaces here, we're actually going to have bathrooms. Okay. 1884, it was built. We're going to clear up the whole front, sandblast it, keep the original iron gates, everything. But yeah, this is, this is basically the front of it. So as you can see, loads of damage. You could taste it, it's damp in uh -huh. here. Um, but that's because it's basically not had heating on it. I don't even know how long. Mm -hmm. Also, we're on a suspended floor here. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of dry, dry rot on, the, yeah, on yeah. the floor. I actually fell through the floor there the other day <laughs> while doing a video. It was really embarrassing. Um, what, a live one? Yeah, live one on yeah. Facebook, yeah. <laughs> This building is so old. Yep. It's exactly like all the terraced houses that are built around here. Um, all built with massive stones, black mortar, but there's no insulation in mm -hmm. them. The walls are literally this thick. It's really bad, like for energy efficiency and things like that. But in terms of like long lasting, these these buildings will be here forever. Yeah. It's just they're a nightmare to heat. So when we actually convert this into flats, we're going to have to put in so much insulation, mm -hmm. especially because the Welsh government um, are really, really strict on flats and particularly flat conversions. We're going to have to have integrated fire alarm systems, integrated sprinkler systems. We're, they're going to have to be like super, super insulated. Um, they basically have gone like OTT mm -hmm. um, on it, which isn't a bad thing because it means that, you know, everybody's protected, it's safe, it's going to be completely energy efficient. On this particular ground floor, you're going to have a two bed flat here. It's going to be right at the front. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to have bathroom in the stairwell there, bathroom in the stairwell there, uh, bedroom, bedroom, living room, kitchen, diner. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to have two one beds here. And then your stairwell is probably going to come, probably start here. This is probably where it's going to start in yeah. and around here. Yeah, I don't know whether this used to be an area where people used to wait before they got married or um, I don't know, but um, it's a bit random. <laughs> Down here is probably, I would say, the worst bit of the building in terms of like damage, that type of thing. But this is the door I was talking about to the secret garden. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can do it. So 
this will all be communal space, so we'll do something with landscaping wise. I found a cat house there the other day, and I was afraid that there's going to be like kittens and things in there. Could you just see my day going down the drain to RSPCA, but luckily there was nothing in there. There's no way I would have been able to leave them. All of these stairs are going to be taken out. Yeah. Like I said, the bathroom is going to go for um, the two-bed flat there, and then there's going to be another bathroom here. But if you squeeze through here, this, and here, it's chapel. Oh, yeah. Which is pretty cool. So, you've still got literally all the old pews, and that's still a fully preserved organ. <laughs> These pews, um, we are going to try and sell an auction. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how much I'm going to sell, but literally this coming Wednesday, I've got a guy come in to price up taking all of them. When the church was selling this, they were like, oh, do you mind if we leave the pews in? And I was like, no, definitely leave the pews in because yeah. we'll sell them, right? Yeah, yeah. The organ, I have no idea what we're going to do uh -huh. because we had some guy come here and look at it and he was like, it's one of the most amazing organs I've ever seen because it's so preserved uh -huh. and you can see that it doesn't look like a normal organ because it's got paintwork on it. Yeah, yeah. It looks quite like, I call it art and crafty, I don't even think that's the word. <laughs> um, but supposedly this was the style in the early 1900s but this church was built in 1884 um, which means that this was actually probably pre its time, so I'm told. Was someone like buys or something like that? Or... <sighs> Yes and no, it's obviously really unique and yeah. niche. Um, they were saying that potentially it would be something for a museum, but how we transport it out of here, yeah, yeah. I, again, I've got no idea. So there was like some sort of painting or plaque or something there. Um, and then obviously when the church came in just to clear things that they wanted to go, um, they cleared whatever was there, but it's actually revealed original artwork oh, yeah. underneath. So I believe that this artwork is actually all the way up these columns. Mm -hmm. It's just been painted over. So to give you an, a bit of an idea about what we're doing in terms of levels here, you can actually see the three floors quite clearly. So you're yeah. standing on floor, floor one, mm -hmm. below where we were, floor two, Floor three, kind of where the pews are up there. Yeah. And then floor four kind of starts where the top of the wooden beams are up there. And those are our four floors. 100% caters towards being flats. Mm -hmm. Just because it's rectangular, it's easy yeah. to divvy up. Um, and the roof goes so high. So apparently there's apparently there's room above that as well, standing room. Which is crazy because I thought that would take you all the way up there. But apparently there's standing room up there. Um, but there's more than enough room to put four floors in there. But yeah, this is this is this is it. I'll show you. We've come up around here. Originally, uh, the miners that worked in certain mines would have to go to certain churches, and out of their wages, they'd have to pay contributions. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of kept the church going. So I'm told. Nobody watching this, correct me. It's not a fact. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. But this kind of gives you an idea. You've literally got people in here from 1890. Jeez. I think what we'll probably do with these is donate them to like the local libraries. Yeah, yeah. So you've literally got all the contributions that they've made, their names, how much they've paid and on which dates, um, which is, is, is just quite cool, really. But this is what I was talking to you about, the intricate designs and the painting, yeah, yeah. that supposedly it was pre its time. There's nothing around here, apparently, that is very much like this. This, is, this would be like a really grand organ yeah. for the area. Um, as you can see, the rest of the church is quite minimalistic. Mm. The organ is all completely intact. Um, it's just kind of what we do with it. One of my favourite parts of church, which I found the other day. All the graffiti from oh, yeah. maybe church boys, choir boys, whoever was here, church girls, well, I don't know. Whoever may have sat here and, and obviously helped with the organ. Mm -hmm. um, you've got all their old like inscriptions, dates, um, which I thought was quite nice. Oh yeah, that they will roam on that, all the dates. Yeah, which I thought was quite, I don't know, it's quite quite cool. Things like this I like, because yeah. it's, part, it's part of the history, history isn't it? Yeah. It's literally 100% part of the history. It's quite a cool, quite cool project. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a big one. Um, so what, once the planning comes through, how long will this, like, how long will it the, take? The rip out's going to take a while. So yeah. first and foremost, we want to sell off anything that's of actual value in here. Uh-huh. Um, once we've done that, um, then, <clears throat> and we've got planning, then we can start, we can start the rip out basically. Mm -hmm. um, rip out is going to take a good couple of months because there's so many intricate details yeah. about this particular site. Um, and for instance, when these pews were put in up here, I have no idea what they were put in with. Um, mm -hmm. You can see a little bit that that one is starting to come, not undone, but it's a bit distressed. Yeah. So 
yeah, uh, what we're going to find, I don't know. But the actual it's structure, though, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. But the actual structure of the building looks sound. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to have to literally break all the way back. We have to hack it all off. Like I said, downstairs, all the suspended floor is going to have to come up because it's pretty much rotten throughout. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a lot, a lot of timber and things that are going to have to be. Um, like gotten rid of and like even here so i love the ceiling i think it'd be epic to leave like a flat that had mm -hmm. that type yeah, of ceiling yeah. but the problem is is um they're all pine which is great but if we put them in flats then every <coughs> single individual plank is going to have to be fire treated mm -hmm. so one of the things i think we're hopefully going to be able to do is keep the arches um but take off like the actual wooden um ceilings yeah. we're probably just gonna have to insulate plaster them as you can see those air vents are they're proper old um, um, I know that we definitely got pigeons up there. <laughs> There's going to be a serious amount of steel that's going in here. Mm -hmm. So um, structural engineer and stuff is going to it's going to be a key player in this because this is basically going to have steel structure with inside it. Mm -hmm. uh, putting the steels in is going to be, I mean, they're going to be some serious sets of steels. Yeah. Um, and they'll probably be coming through the windows. So we'll take out all the windows um, so we can get materials and stuff through here. But yeah. So this is this is the chapel. What's like the plan of it? You're going to be selling the flats? No, we're going to keep them. We're either going to rent them out, um, or maybe potentially use them for service accommodation. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet. Um, but the fallback position is rent out. So yeah, yeah. idea is bought it, check, sell off what's inside, which is worth any money to go back against the purchase price, mm -hmm. um, which hopefully we'll do in the next couple of weeks. Then get planning. Um, once we get planning. Um, probably raise finance maybe even in development finance mm -hmm. to finance the actual refurbishment reason being once you get planning we can get much better rates yeah. um and obviously we own the asset outright so um we can put it on the title it's unencumbered and then um convert to 11 flats refinance out all the money we believe we'll refinance it all out with a bit left mm -hmm. and then rent it out cash flow and asset for the, for the viewers uh, we were talking about it in the car how do you go about like finding the site this and then applying for planning and like the architecture? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so in terms of finding a site like this, um, again, I can't, I can't take the credit for this. Corey found a site like this. Um, to be honest with you, they, they appear on like right move and things like that all the time, but then you can also find agents that are specifically dealing commercial premises that they try and offload. So you can find their sites. Um, sometimes you don't find them on right move, but literally you can find them by Google. Um, it's as easy as that. So we would send this site to our planning consultant, depending on what area it is. He'll basically give us the once over and say, yes, it works. No, it doesn't work, don't touch it. Or it could work, but you're gonna have these obstacles. Um, factor in a bit of extra money. Once we've gone to planning consultant, we then go to an architect and say, look, how would you divvy up the space? This is what we're looking at achieving. Can it be possible? They give us a really, really rough kind of plan to work with. Um, which means we can then factor in build costs. Mm -hmm. So say, I don't know, this goes to the architect. Yes, I can get 11 flats in. Um, this is kind of the, the rough makeup of it. We can then go to a builder and go, look, we've got eight one beds, three two beds, what's your very rough price, four floors, very, very kind of like ballpark, where are you? So that's what happens next, architect, builder. Um, and then we look for investment. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Ooh. Smash the like button.